what's going on guys it's your boy tmi i am the mass investor welcome back to the channel we have several huge updates going into tomorrow i got a play for you guys of course we do have a recap that we called out just a few days ago absolutely killed it we have dumb money with me in theaters soon ken griffin interview right before the movie dumb money comes out several different individual name updates on the market so without any further ado guys let's get into it if you haven't yet of course smash the like button if you're new here feel free to subscribe to the channel so you guys get updates just like this hit the little bell notification and if you guys are gang gang put a one in the chat and let's get this thing going okay so first things first today guys i do want to say for those of you guys who've been following the channel for a long period of time we have been following cv night since it was nine to thirteen dollars and today it had an absolute rip all the way up to a day high of 56.80 now as you guys can see in the chart here i was looking for 56.92 and we did have an amazing play today with several different people in the discord today making an absolute bag over 300 place 200 place here and this was just off of my live call out we had another trader in the discord who actually called it up before i even did today who would have had a play up roughly 15 to 1800 percent had people taking them at open right so we had an amazing day today but here we go guys just a quick fyi somebody yesterday in the discord was talking about how much fun and how much success they've been seeing and they offered to sponsor people if we kept open the ten dollar special they said honestly can i sponsor people you roll this ten dollar special and i'll pay for 10 people to join this discord is legit pays for itself and the knowledge shared so if you guys would like to join us guys for live trading we have people that are willing to pay for you just to jump in there we're not going to ask them to do that, of course. We will open it up until close tomorrow. The link's in the description below, guys. Feel free to jump in there and live trade with us every single day. We post our entries. We post our exits. We post our wins. We post our losses. It's very transparent, and we have been on an absolute roll like we did just show you guys with CVNA here. But let's keep this going today, guys. The overall look for the SPY after we did have data come out today was decent. Data today that came out was a little bit shaky. The initial jobless claims was a little bit lower than expected, which is great that people aren't losing jobs, but also not great for the fact that it does lead people to believe that the chances of us seeing a rate hike will be a little bit higher which typically has a negative effect on the market that being said the market was green today we had a gap fill back up towards 449.17 i told you guys before if we can crack above 449.17 we will be extremely bullish and right now we are even up in the after hours 43 cents looking like we want to go back and retest that gap fill back up towards 453 now it's possible we get there tomorrow i don't know if we're going to get that gap fill as you guys can see here we had that gap fill attempt here all the way back on friday september 1st before pulling all the way back down here towards 442 okay so it looks like we're going for an attempt here i do wonder if we're going to see high Higher highs or lower highs and that will really set the trend for the market here if we see lower highs i expect us to go back down and test lower lows if we see higher highs the next level of resistance would roughly be around 459 460 okay a significant push for the market especially in september september are historically bearish months but let's keep this going guys uh, let's take a look at tesla right now tesla had an amazing day today as well off of that 272 90 level we've been looking for for the past few days here as you guys can see yesterday um it was a level of resistance here after that early morning break rejection 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 roughly four times yesterday early today it broke out had a tough time staying above it got back above it today and then ran and never looked back so we are going to be looking to see if Tesla can get up uh, tomorrow seeing if we can get towards that 278 level and then that 2883 to 283 level for a gap fill as well in Tesla there are several different gaps above us right now in the market which are looking pretty good and Tesla has been a key key part of uh, of the market right now so the play for you guys to watch out for tomorrow is Google in my personal opinion this is looking very good daily volume looking good flay pattern breakout retest rip it also has a daily gap from 139.36 up to 140. If we can see a day high break, a previous day high break, which is roughly 138.70, I will be looking to go long here to push not just to get to that 139.86 level, but to get towards that 140, 141 level on Google, especially on a Friday. It will be high risk, high reward play, but of course, you guys do as you guys see fit, not financial advice. That is just the play of the day that I'll be looking at tomorrow. So hopefully that's able to help you guys out with whatever you guys are looking for, okay? So guys, oh, before we get into this interview with Ken Griffin, quick up to here we also do have more data tomorrow but i mean it's it's all two-star data it's nothing that should be really shifting the markets too too much in the pre-market uh, we have the michigan five-year inflation we have the import index the export index so so information nothing as crazy as cpi ppi initial job exchange retail it, it, was, it was a lot of huge market updates overall today you guys take a look at them right here we had sales core cpi um sorry core ppi core retail sales initial jobless claims ppi in the morning it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts, right? So without any further ado, guys, let's get into this interview today with Ken Griffin. And a quick reminder, if you guys haven't yet, smash the like button, engage the video. Here we go. Let's get back to our Sarah Eisen with uh, Citadel's Ken Griffin. Sarah. Hi, thank you, Carl. And I am here with Ken Griffin, founder of Citadel. Um, it's good to see you here, here at Success Academy, which I know you want to talk about. Thank it's, you for joining it's us. It's great to be here today. 
We, we're going to talk about education and, and why success in a moment, but, but first, big markets day for us. I can definitely see how people think he's a robot. Even, even with that one response, I'm already, I'm already brought back to the point where I'm like, oh, I forgot how much of a robot he is. Big IPO day. The folks were just talking about ARM. Do you, do you look at ARM, which is the biggest debut in, in a couple of years, as a sentiment barometer? How, how do you look at IPOs and what they signal about where we are in the market? I mean, so clearly the ARM transaction is a sentiment barometer. The very fact the deal's coming to market today tells you there's a perception that our capital markets are reopening for IPOs. And I, I really hope this is a deal that goes off very well today. We need to see all of the VC-backed companies of the last decade have that opportunity to go to our public markets to raise capital so that the founders have an opportunity to continue to grow their businesses and grow our economy. It's been a surprisingly good year for the markets and the economy, which I think is reflected in the fact that they're, they're going public. Question, Ken, is what comes next? So actually, I would agree with you. It's been a, been a really good year for the market, particularly with the backdrop of higher real interest rates. So if you look at both the yield on the 10-year bond and more importantly, the real yield, for example, in the five-year TIPS bonds, we've seen, a, again, an increase in real rates and nominal rates, and yet the stock market's been resilient. So that's a, that's a really interesting year to see the resilience of our stock market against this backdrop that would usually be very challenging for equities. Think it can continue? I'm, I'm a bit anxious that this rally can continue. You know, obviously, one of the big drivers of the rally has been the, the just frenzy over generative AI, which has powered many of the big tech stocks. I like to believe that this, this rally has legs. I'm a bit anxious. We're, we're sort of in the seventh or eighth inning of this rally. Well, part of it has been the, the soft landing story. Are you a buyer of that? The fact that we just haven't gone into recession despite 525 basis points of tightening. So it takes about a year to two years for an interest rate hike to work its way through the economy. It's not instantaneous. We're now at the point where we're going to see the impact of these hikes really start to play out. We're seeing the job market starting to weaken. There's been, there's been a number of news stories. In according to the reports this morning, according, <clears throat> yeah, according to the reports this morning, that's not the case. But that being said, we'll see if the, there is some truth to this. And as much as I can you know, talk a lot of shit about this guy, some of the things he's saying right now are pretty accurate. So let's keep it going. Recent weeks about how companies are willing to pull back with their pain for, for starting roles. We're seeing uh, signs that consumers have had enough in terms of price increases, that they're starting to walk away from products that are trying to push through price increases. So there's signs here that we're, we're heading very quickly into hopefully the soft landing, potentially a more difficult scenario moving into mid to late last year in terms of, of an actual recession. And there you guys go. So that's the interview with Ken Griffin, the snake. I mean, Ken Griffin, the CEO of Citadel. Now, not somebody that I necessarily like at all. I mean, somebody that I actually dislike a lot. But that being said, he did bring up some pretty interesting points and pretty insightful points. Despite the fact that I was actually watching to make fun of him, I do want to share the insightful information with you guys because getting the information across is the overall idea here. Dumb Money, the movie is coming out next weekend. It should be a great one. If you haven't, uh, go get your tickets, go see it. Um, hopefully, 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 hopefully this is a, a, a it is as good as a movie as it does look in theaters or it does look in the previews right now because it does look like it's pretty good but i think even highlighting the same reason why a lot of different retail investors came into the market in the first place Rowan kitty the man the myth the legend uh let's go take a look to see how stupid wall street really looks in this movie and uh, hopefully this does inspire more people to just get involved with the markets as time goes on but getting into that guys let's take a look at gamestop right here coming off of this historical demand zone back here in january back here in march over 60 to 70 percent rips here now we have it here before the earnings season we did see a pullback down here to see some higher lows. If we can break over that 1950 level here, I will be looking for a push up towards the $22, $23 range to get back to this historical level of resistance here. If we can get a breakup over that, we'll see. But an interesting thing that I did see recently was the fact that we saw insiders buying into GameStop. 
GME2 Insiders bought shares last week reported over 21,000 shares being bought worth over $372,626 to be exact. Don't forget about the last 200, uh, sorry, 626 bucks. Um, pretty bullish coming from GameStop. Historical demand zone, uh, people that are in, you know, the inside of the company buying in, putting their money where their mouth is. You love to see that. So we'll see where GameStop is, especially after this movie does come out. I expect it to be a little bit of a, you know, action in the market. We also got some updates today with uh, AMC as well, although it didn't have as much of a bullish day as uh, GameStop did. It started off hot and then it kind of sold off as the day went on there. They did get an update saying that they did uh, give, release some information on the dilution. AMC Entertainment Holdings Inc. successfully completes an at-the-market equity offering. I'm bringing this from the Investor Connect. Raising more than $325 million, substantially increasing its financial resilience here. Now, there was a conversation around whether this was the right time. It was at all-time lows. Can they have picked a better time to dilute the share? Shares. This was trading at roughly around 1364 before that. A bunch of different things there, but I'm just simply translating the information to you guys. You guys can also go check out the information at the Investor Connect website. Uh, but we'll see here if AMC can hold and get back above the previous day highs of roughly that $9 level here because you do want to see a pushback up towards that 1035, 1057 level and get this uh, fair value gap and this actual gap filled over the short term. Hopefully, that the dilution has finished, it will lead to a little more institutional flow and bullish nature in this market for the stock. But again, guys, keep your eyes on Google tomorrow as we do have an end of the week that will be worth watching. And that's what I got for you guys today. So if you guys are looking for more information, guys, on trading, live trading, call-outs, watches, all that jazz, guys, links in the description, guys, feel free to jump to the Discord with us. We live trade there every single day. For everybody else, I will catch you guys tomorrow morning on the live stream on the TMI live channel. Links also in the description or we'll be here for a market wrap-up video, okay? Much love, guys. See you guys in the next one. Deuces.